Hello, everyone, and um, great to be able to talk to you about Triavera Immunologics, an exciting engineer T cell therapy company. I want to thank you, organizer, for inviting me to uh, to share with you the um, you know our technology, the biology, and uh, some exciting data and where we're going from here. As you all know, the advent of engineer T cell therapy has changed the treatment of certain cancers. Uh, you know, forever we hope. Um, Obviously, we see phenomenal results in heme malignancies like lymphoma, leukemia, and myeloma. However, there are some challenges that have uh, arisen in the space. So if you look at the top right, obviously, we know that manufacturing T cells is still very time dollar and technology intensive. The risk of severe toxicity still exists despite the use of steroids or anti-IL-6 therapies. Um, and it also means at the end of the day, also because sometimes because of the age of the patients, it means that only a relatively small number of patients are eligible right now to receive cell therapy. Reimbursement is an issue because we know they're very expensive therapies. And also there are so many uh, companies pursuing the same targets has become a really crowded space if you think about C19 as an example. But the challenge, and that's why we don't want to talk about is the top left, is the little success so far in solid tumors. And that has to do with the fact that engineered T cell often show tonic signaling, therefore have premature exhaustion, lack of T cell persistence, um, difficulty uh, trans, you know, going over a hostile tumor microenvironment. And that's why people have come up with complex new designs of, for instance, of cars for solid tumors, but it doesn't make it easier sometimes for patients who have to tolerate these therapies. So for us, it's all about differentiation. We truly think that a more natural activation of the T cell represents the next step forward in T cell therapy. So Triavera, our technology is known as TAC or T cell antigen coupler. And a value proposition is that we expect to show efficacy and safety in solid tumors, which we have proven now consistently across different uh, multi, uh, mouse models of cancer. And we consistently show that the TAC T cells outperform the CAR T cells in those settings. And not only in our own experiments, also been externally validated now by other pharma and biotech companies that we're working with. We intend to bring several product candidates into the clinic in the next two years. The first one will be an autologous TAC directed against HER2 for solid tumors. And then also later on an allogeneic TAC for solid tumors. We have not disclosed the targets yet. And we hope to bring that to an IND by the end of next year. We have built a team that has strong engineered T-cell drug development and financing expertise, and we just completed a $55 million Series A round of financing. So let's talk about the TAC. The TAC is a chimeric antigen receptor, but structure is quite different than anything else out there. We have three domains, a tripartite structure, and because of that's really unique and innovative, and that's why we receive very strong compositional meta claims in the US and in other countries. So starting at the top, the most outside uh, presenting domain is a like binding domain that's very similar to what CAR, it's either a single chain antibody, it could be a designed anchor with B protein or DARPIN or any other peptide will work. Um, that domain is linked to a flexible linker to what we call the heart of the TAC, which is a proprietary single chain antibody to the CD3 epsilon domain of the normal TCR. And thirdly, and that's really unique to us, we have the transmembrane and cytoplasmic domain of the CD4 core receptor. So how does it work in biology-wise? So on the top left, you see a normal T cell receptor. As you know, it consists of a number of extracellular transmembrane and intracellular proteins. And on the left hand side of that, you see in blue is a co-receptor, could either be CD4, CD8. That also brings on the inside a little uh, LCK kinase that is important for phosphorylating uh, the various uh, 10 items in the inside of the TCR. Next to it is a car. A car is a beautiful, simple design, very effective as we know, but the car is either on or very on. There's no off switch to a car um, because it has its own activation domain. It has its own uh, co-stimulatory domain. So the, basically CAR T cell is always active and you can see the intercellular side only represents three of the 10 items. And that's quite different from the normal TCR. On the right hand side, you see the normal TCR again on the left, but now you see the TAC T cell on the right where you see that the TAC of course, it binds to, the, to a cancer-presenting antigen. And then, of course, it binds to the single-chain antigen and brings the normal TCR into play. And then on the inside, you see that the intercellular part of the TAC T cell is exactly the same as a normal T cell. So the LCK kinase helps phosphorylating the 10 items, which is important not only to activate the T cell when it meets up with an antigen, but also to stop the T cell from being activated when it does not need to be activated. 
on the bottom graph, two of our, our competitors, as TCR squared and, and Eureka, um, they both also using the normal TCR to activate the T cell. However, we're the only ones that have that CD4 co-receptor domain that helps with the normal activation of the T cell. So what does it mean? Um, so these characteristics that we have seen um, truly present uh, advantages to detect T cell. Obviously, just like a car, it works independently of the MHC complex. That's what you want. However, we don't show any tonic signaling, so we don't see uh, upregulation of, you know, of you know, exhaustion markers like uh, PD-1, LAC3, or TIM3. Remember, the TAC does not have an activation domain. It does not have a co-stimulatory domain. All the activity goes to the normal TCR. It also we have shown now through photography that TAC T cell forms a normal immune synapse with a cancer target cell. We don't see an over-exuberant cytokine release, no premature T cell exhaustion. We show very strong T cell persistence over time, deep penetration and activation in solid tumors, and very strong in vitro and in vivo efficacy in tumor models of cancer. And no safety signals to date. And these TAC T cell truly retain a memory T cell phenotype that we truly think is important for adaptive cell therapy. So obviously we've done a lot of work in different tumor models, so I'll share that mostly focusing on solid tumors in this case. So this first one is an ovarian cancer, Ofgar 3 HER2 overexpressing uh, cancer cell line. You inject it in the flanks of the mice, you let them grow. On the left, you see the growth curve. On the right hand side, you see the body weight curve. And you see on the left, you see that the green, of course, is the controls. They see exponential growth of the tumor. And the car, in this case, is a CD, CD28 second generation car. You see that the tumor stops growing. You don't see much regression. A 4-1-BB, by the way, in this model is not active at all. But with the, with the TAC in the blue line, you see consistency. We see full work and immediate regression of the tumor. On the right-hand side, we know that the CAR-Ts are extremely toxic. And you see that in the body weight change of these animals. So they lose almost 25% of their body weight. Uh, we have a mouse ICU to try to coach them back to life uh, to be able to finish the experiments uh, time-wise. But you see that the TAC T cell treated animals have no change compared to the control. So there is no toxicity observed in TAC T cell treated mice. So people say, well, how is that possible? So here, what we done, did is we did a multi-parametric immunistic chemistry on tissues taken from tumor or a normal lung. And you see the same in normal cardiac tissue of these mice. Uh, so these pictures of, you see TAC, CAR T and control cells. And you look at the TAC T cells on the left top picture, you see that the TAC T cells are actively penetrated into the tumor. Uh, the proliferating, so the chi 67 positive, you see both uh, the yellow and cyan, so you both CD4 and CD8 cells. And this leads, of course, to the regression of the tumor. The CAR T cells, however, seven days after injection of the cells, there are no CAR T cells in the tumor. They're distracted by antigen presenting in the lung and in cardiac tissue. And you can see mostly are yellow, so the CD4s, and we know the CD4s are associated with toxicities. So the CAR T cells are so trigger happy, they find another antigen, they bind to it, and they start producing cytokines. And they don't really have to challenge the chance, basically, to penetrate into the solid tumor. So a lot of people say, why do TAC T cells penetrate? The question is more, why are CAR T cells not penetrating? And that is because of the tonic signaling, the trigger happy and they really attach to another antigen in another place. This slide is the slide taken from the same cancer model. This is the slide that the, the clinicians like. You see here the production of cytokines between the CAR T cells in red, the TAC T cells in blue, and then the controls in green. And you see here, and remember this is a large scale, that the CAR T cells produce about 100 to 1,000 fold more cytokines than the TAC T cells do. However, the TAC T cells are effective in this model, not the CAR T cells. So the CAR T cells overproduce way too much cytokines that you need, and that TAC T cells produce enough interferon gamma and, and TNF alpha to still kill, penetrate and kill the tumor cells. So this is a summary. We did a lot of work on the HER2 models, uh, whether that's gastroesophageal, gastric cancer. We also looked at breast cancer model that was receptin resistant and you see phenomenal results repeatedly and either complete regression. And on the right hand side, the curve, there's a nice dose response curve where you see even at a 1.5 million dose levels of cells, you see that there's efficacy in these models. So what do we take 
you know, 12, 6, 3, or 1.5 million DAC T cells, you see that there's efficacy in this uh, OE19 gastroesophageal cancer model. So where are we now? Obviously, we have strong data and different models. Uh, of course, we keep talking to KOLs about our program. Uh, we received FDA feedback on our pre-IND submission. Uh, we are basically expecting to submit an IND to the agency in Q1 of next year. So that brings us then to our pipeline here. Uh, as I said, the autologous HER2 goes in the clinic early next year, focus on HER2 positive solid tumors, so ovarian, breast, gastric, and other HER2 uh, overexpressing tumors. We have an allogeneic tag that is built on gamma delta cells, because as you know, we cannot knock out the TCR because we need the TCR for detective function. So we're focusing on gamma delta cells and also on invariable NKT cells. We have not disclosed the targets. We have quite a extensive bioinformatics program to looking at different tumor targets and obviously binders for those in, in solid tumor settings. And we hope to bring an allogeneic tag into an IND by the end of next year. Uh, as I said, we're working with quite a few other um, you know, allogeneic uh, solid tumor programs. We do have an, an, an autologous CD19 tag, very efficacious, very safe, however, when we were ready to start the study, COVID-19 happened, so we didn't start the study, as you can imagine. And right now, uh, we truly are decided to focus on the solar tumor setting, so there's an opportunity if people are interested in, in licensing our tax cd program. So obviously, um, significant near-term value inflection point for investors and also for growing and expanding the company. Um, obviously, the focus will be on the, on the HER2 program, followed down by an allogeneic uh, TAC program. And as I said, uh, you know, we can definitely run the, the CD19 study. However, we decide to postpone that and focus on solid tumors squarely. Um, when we, the paper on the technology was published in Nature Communications in 2018, the day after the phone started to ring. So all the well-known pharma and, and biotech companies in the CAR-T space called and wanted to talk. So not only do they want to talk, they also want to put their resources to work. So right now we're doing three uh, evaluation programs, one with the top five major global U.S. pharma company and two with two of the top three U.S. CAR-T companies. And the nice thing for us is that in their own experiments, their own labs, they also have shown that the, the TAC-T cells outperform the CAR-T cells. So there's a nice external validation. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, work closely with uh, some of them perhaps get to a licensing discussion. And on the bottom is important. We all know that manufacturing is a big challenge, as I said in the beginning, so for autologous uh, especially. So we did a deal with Lanza that we announced several months ago where we have a risk sharing uh, manufacturing agreement to the use of their cocoon system, which is a beautiful, uh, ultimately point of care manufacturing system of, of TAC-T cells. Uh, beautiful cells that have produced so far, and we're looking forward to bring that to the clinic and use that in our HER2 phase one, two uh, study already. So our financing history, I mean, the company was founded in, in Hamilton, Ontario, McMaster University. Jonathan Bramson is a professor of immunology there. Uh, together with, uh, with Brian Bloom, the CEO of Bloom Burton, investment advisory firm, they founded uh, Trianvera in 2015. Um, I came aboard in January, 2018. And since then, we've been on a, on a financing uh, route and we just closed a $55 million Series A that was led by Leaps, on Bear and, and North Pond Ventures with Bloom Burton, Viva Biotech, Ocean Pine, C3I and Haywood Security as uh, additional investors. So we're very happy. It's a great, nice round that will bring us into the middle of 2022. So with that, I want to end it and I want to thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward to any questions you might have. Thank you so much.